Throughout the footballing world, there always seems to be a few managers who are forever stuck on the managerial merry-go-round. Whenever someone loses their job, there must be a Facebook group or a big WhatsApp message where the post gets offered around to the same people every time. Whether they were fired, they resigned, or a mutual agreement was reached, the likes of Roy Hodgson, Sam Allardyce, Alan Pardew, and even Joe Kinnear are always seem to be top of the chairman's wish list when it comes to replacing the man in the hot seat. So how do they do it? Well, here's my guide on how to become a successfully average football manager. Number one, re-sign the same player at every club you go to. Now there is one particular person that comes to mind when you think of this. Let's just say he likes to do his press conferences out the window of his car. He once gave a fan a debut in a pre-season game for West Ham and he thinks Peter Crouch is, well, terrific. That's right, it's Harry Redknapp. He signed Crouchy three times during his career and had Jermaine Defoe under his tutelage three times as well, giving him his debut at West Ham. And as for Nico Crancher, well, Harry Redknapp has signed him for Portsmouth, Tottenham and QPR, so don't rule out anything else in the future for the Croat. And if you don't believe me about the pros of signing a player for your team and staying in the managerial frame, just ask Neil Warnock, who has signed goalkeeper Paddy Kenny an unbelievable five times. My next tip is probably the most ridiculous one, but making yourself a marketable image seems to send Chairman wild. Even though the days of a physically strong, mentally tough, hard to beat Stoke City team are long gone, you can still find Tony Pulis on touchlines up and down the country wearing that stupid cap. So much so that even his avatar wears the cap in FIFA 18. Now, I'm not downplaying the role that a good cap can play, like keeping the sun out of your eyes, but it seems like Pulis insists on wearing this hat more as an image thing to keep his face and that hat in the managerial frame should a job arise, because let's face it, his talking on the pitch and his team style of play is hardly setting the football world alight. For another example, think of how much everybody loved Martin O'Neill's tracksuit bottoms. Yes, they were probably very comfy, but they didn't win you football matches. We now come to a man whose managerial career started with early promise with spells at Birmingham and Wigan, following on from a great playing career at Manchester United. But since then, disappointing spells at Sunderland, Hull and now Aston Villa have meant that Steve Bruce's managerial stock has fallen somewhat. So how does he keep his name in the game? Simple. Just get your son to play football as well and nobody will forget that Bruce last name. Steve's son Alex has played much of his career in the second tier of English football and enjoyed it somewhat. He's even played under his dad at Birmingham and Hull. So much like when your team needed a manager when you were a kid, just ask one of the guys on your team's dad to do it. And hey presto, Steve Bruce is back on the managerial horse. So I've discussed managerial tendencies off the pitch, but let's look at what they're mostly known for, the kind of football their teams produce on the pitch. Now whenever a team finds themselves in the midst of a relegation battle, instead of trying to play their way out, they turn to the mother of all one-trick ponies, Sam Allardyce. Much like when an actor pigeonholes himself into playing one role, Sam Allardyce has been known as the master of the relegation battle, leading teams over the 40-point mark and into the promised land of mid-table obscurity. So how does he do it? Well, with a physical, organised, direct approach, the kind of which made Kevin Davis look like a half-decent player for almost a decade. And so, the Big Sam footballing circus continues. Last but not least, we come to probably one of my favourite managers of all time. He falls into the category of being funny, charming and so ridiculous that everyone forgets that he's not actually a great manager and loves him anyway. His press conferences have ranged from talking about Cristiano Ronaldo's privates to pulling women on a night out. But let's be honest, that's probably what he'll be most remembered for. To be fair, he has won three promotions in his time but it looks like Ian Holloway is destined to spend most of his managerial career as a Football League stalwart as opposed to a Premier League trendsetter. So as we come to the conclusion of this video, I've just been informed of an appointment of the most successfully average manager to the most successfully average team. That's right, Alan Pardew is now boss at West Brom. It seems that the footballing managerial merry-go-round is the gift that keeps on giving, if you're on it that is. So there's my guide to how to be a successfully average manager in the Premier League and below. Who would you love to have at your club and who would you definitely tell to stay away? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.